In Buddhism, the term anatta Pali or anatman Sanskrit refers to the doctrine of non-self, that there is no unchanging, permanent self, soul or essence in living beings. It is one of the seven beneficial perceptions in Buddhism, and along with dukkha suffering and anicca impermanence, it is one of three right understandings about the three marks of existence. The Buddhist concept of anatta or anatman is one of the fundamental differences between Buddhism and Hinduism, with the latter asserting that atman, self, soul, exists. Topic: Etymology and nomenclature. Anatta is a composite Pali word consisting of an not without and atta soul. The term refers to the central Buddhist doctrine that there is in humans no permanent underlying substance that can be called the soul. It is one of the three characteristics of all existence, together with dukkha suffering, unsatisfactoriness and anicca impermanence. Anatta is synonymous with anatman and plus atman in Sanskrit Buddhist texts. In some Pali texts, atman of Vedic texts is also referred to with the term atan, with the sense of soul. An alternate use of atan or atta is self, oneself, essence of a person", driven by the Vedic-era Brahmanical belief that the soul is the permanent, unchangeable essence of a living being, or the true self. In Buddhism-related English literature, anatta is rendered as, "...not self", but this translation expresses an incomplete meaning, states Peter Harvey, a more complete rendering is, "...non-self." Because from its earliest days, Anatta doctrine denies that there is anything called a self in any person or anything else, and that a belief in self is a source of dukkha, suffering, pain, unsatisfactoriness. It is also incorrect to translate Anatta simply as egoless. According to Peter Harvey, because the Indian concept of Atman and Atta is different from the Freudian concept of ego, Anatta or Anatta Vada is also referred to as the no soul or no self doctrine of Buddhism. <laughs> Anatta in early Buddhist texts The concept of anatta appears in numerous sutta of the ancient Buddhist Nikaya texts Pali canon. It appears, for example, as a noun in Samyutta Nikaya 3.141, IV.49, V.345, in Sutta 2.37 of Angatara Nikaya, 2.37-45 and 2.80 of Patisambhidamaga, 3.406 of Dhammapada. It also appears as an adjective, for example, in Samyutta Nikaya 3.114, 3.133, IV.28 and IV.130 166, in Sutta 3.66 and V.86 of Vinaya. The ancient Buddhist texts discuss Atta or Atan, soul, self, sometimes with alternate terms such as Atuman, Tuma. Pugala, Jiva, Sada, Panna, and Nama Rupa, thereby providing the context for the Buddhist Anatta doctrine. Examples of such Atta contextual discussions are found in Diga Nikaya I.186 187, Samyutta Nikaya 3.179 and IV.54, Vinaya I.14, Majjhima Nikaya I.138, 3.19, and 3.265 271, and Angatara Nikaya I.284. The contextual use of Atta in Nikayas is two sided. In one, it directly denies that there is anything called a self or soul in a human being that is a permanent essence of a human being, a theme found in Brahmanical Proto -Hindu traditions. 
In another, states Peter Harvey, such as at Samyutta Nikaya IV.286, the Sutta considers the materialistic concept in pre Buddhist Vedic times of no afterlife, complete annihilation at death to be a denial of self, but still tied up with belief in a self. Self exists is a false premise, assert the early Buddhist texts. However, adds Peter Harvey, these texts do not admit the premise, "...self does not exist," either because the wording presumes the concept of "...self." Prior to denying it, instead, the early Buddhist texts use the concept of anatta as the implicit premise. According to Stephen Collins, the doctrine of anatta and denial of self in the canonical Buddhist texts is insisted on only in certain theoretical contexts, while they use the terms atta, purissa, pugala quite naturally and freely in various contexts. The elaboration of the anatta doctrine, along with identification of the words such as pugala as permanent subject or soul. Appears in later Buddhist literature. Anatta is one of the main bedrock doctrines of Buddhism, and its discussion is found in the later texts of all Buddhist traditions. For example, the Buddhist philosopher Nagarjuna CE, extensively wrote about rejecting the metaphysical entity called Atta or Atman, self, soul, asserting in Chapter 18 of his Mulamajyamakakarika that there is no such substantial entity and that, Buddha taught the doctrine of no self. The texts attributed to the 5th century Buddhist philosopher Vasubandhu of the Yogacara school similarly discuss anatta as a fundamental premise of the Buddha. The Vasubandhu interpretations of no self thesis were challenged by the 7th century Buddhist scholar Kandrakirti, who then offered his own theories on its importance. Existence and non-existence Anatta no self, without soul, no essence is the nature of living beings, and this is one of the three marks of existence in Buddhism, along with anicca impermanence, nothing lasts and dukkha suffering, unsatisfactoriness is innate in birth, aging, death, rebirth, redeath, the samsara cycle of existence. It is found in many texts of different Buddhist traditions, such as the Dhammapada, a canonical Buddhist text. Buddhism asserts with Four Noble Truths that there is a way out of this samsara. <laughs> Eternalism and Annihilationism While the concept of soul in Hinduism as Atman and Jainism as Jiva is taken for granted, which is different from the Buddhist concept of no soul, each of the three religions believed in rebirth and emphasized moral responsibility in different ways in contrast to pre-Buddhist materialistic schools of Indian philosophies. The materialistic schools of Indian philosophies, such as Charvaka, are called annihilationist schools because they posited that death is the end, there is no afterlife, no soul, no rebirth, no karma, and death is that state where a living being is completely annihilated, dissolved. Buddha criticized the materialistic annihilationism view that denied rebirth and karma, states Damien Keown. Such beliefs are inappropriate and dangerous, stated Buddha, because they encourage moral irresponsibility and material hedonism. Anatta does not mean there is no afterlife, no rebirth or no fruition of karma, and Buddhism contrasts itself to annihilationist schools. Buddhism also contrasts itself to other Indian religions that champion moral responsibility but posit eternalism with their premise that within each human being there is an essence or eternal soul, and this soul is part of the nature of a living being, existence and metaphysical reality. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Karma, rebirth and anatta. The Buddha emphasized both karma and anatta doctrines. The Buddha criticized the doctrine that posited an unchanging soul as a subject as the basis of rebirth and karmic moral responsibility, which he called atthikavada. He also criticized the materialistic doctrine that denied the existence of both soul and rebirth, and thereby denied karmic moral responsibility, which he calls natthikavada. Instead, the Buddha asserted that there is no soul, but there is rebirth for which karmic moral responsibility is a must. In the Buddha's framework of karma, right view and right actions are necessary for liberation. <laughs> <laughs> Developing the self According to Peter Harvey, while the suttas criticize notions of an eternal, unchanging self as baseless, they see an enlightened being as one whose empirical self is highly developed. This is paradoxical, states Harvey, in that, "...the self like Nibbana state," is a mature self that knows, "...everything is selfless." The "...empirical self." is the sata mind, heart, mindset, emotional nature, and the development of self in the suttas is the development of this sata, one with great self, state the early Buddhist suttas, has a mind which is neither at the mercy of outside stimuli nor its own moods, neither scattered nor diffused, but imbued with self-control, and self-contained towards the single goal of nibbana and a self-like state. This great self is not yet an arahat, because he still does small evil action which leads to karmic fruition, but he has enough virtue that he does not experience this fruition in hell. An arahat, states Harvey, has a fully enlightened state of empirical self, one that lacks the sense of both I am and this I am, which are illusions that the arahat has transcended. The Buddhist thought and salvation theory emphasizes a development of self towards a selfless state not only with respect to oneself, but recognizing the lack of relational essence and self in others, wherein states Martin van Zomeren, "...self is an illusion". <laughs> Anatman in Theravada Buddhism Theravada Buddhism scholars, states Oliver Lehman, consider the Anatta doctrine as one of the main theses of Buddhism. The Buddhist denial of any soul or self is what distinguishes Buddhism from major religions of the world such as Christianity and Hinduism, giving it uniqueness, asserts the Theravada tradition. With the doctrine of anatta, stands or falls the entire Buddhist structure, asserts Nyanatiloka, according to Collins. Insight into the teaching of anatta is held to have two major loci in the intellectual and spiritual education of an individual. As s, he progresses along the path. The first part of this insight is to avoid sakayaditi personality belief, that is converting the sense of I which is gained from introspection and the fact of physical individuality into a theoretical belief in a self. A belief in a really existing body is considered a false belief and a part of the ten fetters that must be gradually lost. The second loci is the psychological realization of anatta, or loss of pride or conceit. This, states Collins, is explained as the conceit of asmimana or I am. What this conceit refers to is the fact that for the unenlightened man, all experience and action must necessarily appear phenomenologically as happening to or originating from an I. When a Buddhist gets more enlightened, this happening to or originating in an I or Sakdhyaditi is less. 
The final attainment of enlightenment is the disappearance of this automatic but illusory I. The Theravada tradition has long considered the understanding and application of the Anatta doctrine to a complex teaching, whose personal, introjected application has always been thought to be possible only for the specialist, the practicing monk. The tradition, states Collins, has insisted fiercely on anatta as a doctrinal position", while in practice it may not play much of a role in the daily religious life of most Buddhists. The suttas present the doctrine in three forms. First, they apply the «no self, no identity» doctrine to all phenomena as well as any and all objects, yielding the idea that «all things are not self». Sab Dhamma Anatta. Second, states Collins, the suttas apply the doctrine to deny self of any person, treating conceit to be evident in any assertion of, This is mine, this I am, this is myself. Atam mamam eso, ham asmi, eso me atta t. Third, the Theravada texts apply the doctrine as a nominal reference, to identify examples of self and not self respectively the wrong view and the right view this third case of nominative usage is properly translated as self as an identity and as unrelated to soul states collins the first two usages incorporate the idea of soul the Theravada doctrine of anatta, or not self not soul, inspire meditative practices for monks, states Donald Swearer, but for the lay Theravada Buddhists in Southeast Asia, the doctrines of kama, rebirth and punna merit inspire a wide range of ritual practices and ethical behavior. The anatta doctrine is key to the concept of nirvana in the Theravada tradition. The liberated nirvana state, states Collins, is the state of anatta, a state that is neither universally applicable nor can be explained, but can be realized. <laughs> Current disputes The dispute about «self» and «not self» Doctrines has continued throughout the history of Buddhism. It is possible, states Johannes Bronckhorst, that, "...original Buddhism did not deny the existence of the soul," even though a firm Buddhist tradition has maintained that the Buddha avoided talking about the soul or even denied its existence. While there may be ambivalence on the existence or non-existence of self in early Buddhist literature, adds Bronckhorst, it is clear from these texts that seeking self-knowledge is not the Buddhist path for liberation, and turning away from self-knowledge is. This is a reverse position to the Vedic traditions which recognized the knowledge of the self as the principal means to achieving liberation. In Thai Theravada Buddhism, for example, states Paul Williams, some modern era Buddhist scholars have claimed that, Nirvana is indeed the true self, while other Thai Buddhists disagree. For instance, the Dhammakaya movement in Thailand teaches that it is erroneous to subsume Nirvana under the rubric of anatta, non -self. instead, Nirvana is taught to be the true self or Dhammakaya. The Dhammakaya movement teaching that nirvana is atta, or true self, was criticized as heretical in Buddhism in the 1994 by Ven. Peyuto, a well-known scholar monk, who stated that Buddha taught nibbana as being non-self. The abbot of one major temple in the Dhammakaya movement, Luang Por Serm Chai of Wat Luang Por Sodh Dhammakayaram, argues that it tends to be scholars who hold the view of absolute non-self, rather than Buddhist meditation practitioners. He points to the experiences of prominent forest hermit monks to support the notion of a true self. 
Quote dot. Similar interpretations on the true self were put forth earlier by the 12th Supreme Patriarch of Thailand in 1939. According to Williams, the Supreme Patriarch's interpretation echoes the Tathagatagarbha Sutras. Several notable teachers of the Thai forest tradition have also described ideas in contrast to absolute non self. Ajahn Maha Bua, a well known meditation master, described the sata mind as being an indestructible reality that does not fall under anatta. He has stated that not self is merely a perception that is used to pry one away from infatuation with the concept of a self, and that once this infatuation is gone, the idea of not self must be dropped as well. American monk Thanissaro Bhikkhu of the Thai forest tradition describes the Buddha's statements on non-self as a path to awakening rather than a universal truth. Thanissaro Bhikkhu states that the Buddha intentionally set the question of whether or not there is a self aside as a useless question, and that clinging to the idea that there is no self at all would actually prevent enlightenment. Scholars Alexander Wynne and Rupert Gethin also take a similar position as Thanissaro Bhikkhu, arguing that the Buddha's description of non self in the five aggregates do not not necessarily mean there is no self, stating that the five aggregates are not descriptions of a human being but phenomena for one to observe. Wynne argues that the Buddha's statements on anatta are a not self teaching rather than a no self teaching. Thanissaro Bhikkhu points to the Ananda Sutta, where the Buddha stays silent when asked whether there is a self or not, as a major cause of the dispute. In Thailand, this dispute on the nature of teachings about self and non self in Buddhism has led to arrest warrants, attacks, and threats. Anatman in Mahayana Buddhism There are many different views of anatta Chinese, wu -wo pinyin, wu -wo, Japanese, wu -wo muga within various Mahayana schools, Nagarjuna, the founder of Madhyamaka middle way school of Mahayana Buddhism, analyzed dharma first as factors of experience. He, states David Kalupahana, analyzed how these experiences relate to bondage and freedom, action and consequence, and thereafter analyzed the notion of personal self. Atta, Atman, Nagarjuna asserted that the notion of a self is associated with the notion of one's own identity and corollary ideas of pride, selfishness, and a sense of psychophysical personality. This is all false, and leads to bondage in his Madhyamaka thought. There can be no pride nor possessiveness, in someone who accepts anatta and denies self, which is the sense of personal identity of oneself, others or anything, states Nagarjuna. Further, all obsessions are avoided when a person accepts emptiness sunyata. Nagarjuna denied there is anything called a self-nature as well as other nature, emphasizing true knowledge to be comprehending emptiness. Anyone who has not dissociated from his belief in personality in himself or others, through the concept of self, is in a state of avidya ignorance and caught in the cycle of rebirths and redeaths. The early Mahayana Buddhism texts link their discussion of emptiness shunyata to anatta and nirvana. They do so, states Moon Keat Chung, in three ways, first, in the common sense of a monk's meditative state of emptiness, second, with the main sense of anatta or everything in the world as empty of self, third, with the ultimate sense of nirvana or realization of emptiness and thus an end to rebirth cycles of suffering. 
The anatta doctrine is another aspect of shunyata, its realization is the nature of the nirvana state and to an end to rebirths. Tathagatagarbha Sutras, Buddha as True Self Some first millennium CE Buddhist texts suggest concepts that have been controversial because they imply a self like concept. In particular are the Tathagatagarbha Sutras, where the title itself means a garbha womb, matrix, seed containing Tathagata. Buddha. These sutras suggest, states Paul Williams, that all sentient beings contain a tathagata as their essence, core or essential inner nature. The Tathagatagarbha doctrine, at its earliest probably appeared about the later part of the 3rd century CE, and is verifiable in Chinese translations of 1st millennium CE. Most scholars consider the Tathagatagarbha doctrine of an essential nature in every living being is equivalent to self, and it contradicts the Anatta doctrines in a vast majority of Buddhist texts, leading scholars to posit that the Tathagatagarbha sutras were written to promote Buddhism to non Buddhists. The Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra explicitly asserts that the Buddha used the term self in order to win over non-Buddhist ascetics. The Ritnagatravabhaga also known as Uttaratantra, another text composed in the first half of 1st millennium CE and translated into Chinese in 511 CE, points out that the teaching of the Tathagatagarbha doctrine is intended to win sentient beings over to abandoning self-love. Atma Sneha considered to be one of the defects by Buddhism. The 6th century Chinese Tathagatagarbha translation states that, Buddha has Shiwo, true self, which is beyond being and nonbeing. However, the Ritnagatravabhaga asserts that the self implied in Tathagatagarbha doctrine is actually not self. According to some scholars, the Buddha nature discussed in these sutras does not represent a substantial self, rather, it is a positive language and expression of sunyata emptiness", and represents the potentiality to realize Buddhahood through Buddhist practices. Other scholars do in fact detect leanings towards monism in these Tathagatagarbha references. Michael Zimmerman sees the notion of an unperishing and eternal self in the Tathagatagarbha Sutra. Zimmerman also avers that the existence of an eternal, imperishable self, that is, Buddhahood, is definitely the basic point of the Tathagatagarbha Sutra. He further indicates that there is no evident interest found in this sutra in the idea of emptiness. Sunyata. Williams states that the self in Tathagatagarbha sutras is actually non-self, and neither identical nor comparable to the Hindu concepts of Brahman and self. <laughs> Anatman in Vajrayana Buddhism The Anatta or Anatman doctrine is extensively discussed in and partly inspires the ritual practices of the Vajrayana tradition. The Tibetan terms such as Bdag Med refer to, "...without a self, insubstantial, Anatman". These discussions, states Jeffrey Hopkins, assert the "...non-existence of a permanent, unitary and independent self." and attribute these ideas to the Buddha. The ritual practices in Vajrayana Buddhism employs the concept of deities, to end self-grasping, and to manifest as a purified, enlightened deity as part of the Vajrayana path to liberation from rebirths. One such deity is goddess Nairathmya literally, non-soul, non-self. She symbolizes, states Miranda Shaw, that self as an illusion", and, "...all beings and phenomenal appearances lack an abiding self or essence", 
in Vajrayana Buddhism. Topic: Anatta, a difference between Buddhism and Hinduism. Anatta is a central doctrine of Buddhism. It marks one of the major differences between Buddhism and Hinduism. According to the Anatta doctrine of Buddhism, at the core of all human beings and living creatures, there is no eternal, essential and absolute something called a soul, self or Atman. Buddhism, from its earliest days, has denied the existence of the self, soul, in its core philosophical and ontological texts. In its soteriological themes, Buddhism has defined nirvana as that blissful state when a person, amongst other things, realizes that he or she has no self, no soul. The traditions within Hinduism believe in Atman. The pre-Buddhist Upanishads of Hinduism assert that there is a permanent Atman, and is an ultimate metaphysical reality. This sense of self, is expressed as, I am, in Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 1.4.1, states Peter Harvey, when nothing existed before the start of the universe. The Upanishadic scriptures hold that this soul or self is underlying the whole world. At the core of all human beings and living creatures, assert the Hindu traditions, there is "...eternal, innermost essential and absolute something called a soul, self that is Atman." Within the diverse schools of Hinduism, there are differences of perspective on whether souls are distinct, whether Supreme Soul or God exists, whether the nature of Atman is dual or non-dual, and how to reach moksha. However, despite their internal differences, one shared foundational premise of Hinduism is that, "...soul, self exists." and that there is bliss in seeking this self, knowing self, and self-realization. While the Upanishads recognized many things as being not self, they felt that a real, true self could be found. They held that when it was found, and known to be identical to Brahman, the basis of everything, this would bring liberation. In the Buddhist suttas, though, literally everything is seen as non-self, even nirvana. When this is known, then liberation, nirvana, is attained by total non-attachment. Thus both the Upanishads and the Buddhist suttas see many things as not-self, but the suttas apply it, indeed non-self, to everything. Both Buddhism and Hinduism distinguish ego-related. I am, this is mine", from their respective abstract doctrines of anatta and atman. This, states Peter Harvey, may have been an influence of Buddhism on Hinduism. <laughs> Anatman and Naratman The term Naratman appears in the Maitrayaniya Upanishad of Hinduism, such as in verses 6.20, 6.21 and 7.4. Naratman literally means, "...selfless". The Naratman concept has been interpreted to be analogous to Anatman of Buddhism. The ontological teachings, however, are different. In the Upanishad, states Thomas Wood, numerous positive and negative descriptions of various states, such as Naratman and Sarvasyatman the self of all, are used in Maitrayaniya Upanishad to explain the nandal concept of the "...highest self." According to Ramatirta, states Paul Dusan, the Naratman state discussion is referring to stopping the recognition of oneself as an individual soul, and reaching the awareness of universal soul or the metaphysical Brahman. See also <laughs> Notes <laughs>